I could ask um, Nicholas as a student, and again, I think this is important by way of general information. The your practice, Nicholas, is you're you're a professional in your practice, um, um, as is Ben. Students will be expected to have some involvement in sport or exercise, and and again, I think from where. Ben is within professional sport, and Nicholas is. Nicholas, could it, could you describe your background leading into where you are? And again, what were your reasons for choosing to study, given that you had a strong background in in the field of strength? Yes, uh, I had a, a strong background in uh, strength training, basically, and. I actually mean maximum strength training since most of my uh, athletes were actual power lifters and mostly were interested in only becoming stronger. Um, I've always loved sports and I've always played sports. I played basketball, I played soccer, I played tennis, um, bicycle, everything. So as soon as I figure out how important strength is for basically any other sport, um, I thought I could teach and coach everyone in the world. Uh, I later found out that strength is, means a lot, but it's not everything. And you have to learn about movement qual quality. You have to learn about power. You have to learn about uh, balance, about um, communication, which is essential. You have to learn about so many other different things. And to me, uh, it, just, it just felt uh, natural to start studying um, in such detail everything else because I, I I found out myself that um, training for strength wasn't enough uh, for, for most athletes. And I really wanted to dive deep uh, knowing that um, that wasn't enough and that I needed to actually know a lot of other things. And fortunately now I, I already feel like I know a lot more uh, than I did two years ago. So that was my main reason. The strength conditioning pathway. Um, I would imagine long before anybody decides to, you know, go down this route within their area of interest and involvement, they've already had and created a, probably a, an interest, some great passion, which we constantly see in coaches who um, want to gain more formal education, accreditation and qualification. And in consultation with experts from all around the world um, over 10 years ago we created a pathway that we felt which was endorsed by a lot of eminent professionals and specialists in the field which um, we considered to be a strong progressive and sequential pathway it kicks off with a certificate uh, starts is, and starts and you see here on the left 30 credits and that means that each module gains 10 credits. And so there's three modules in that. Added on to that are another three modules to gain a certificate in strength and conditioning. And these two stages are the entry stages to the whole area of strength and conditioning. And they're predominantly a, a and we'll see shortly, a very practical oriented um, series of modules. And then they lead on to the higher certificate level. Again, a higher level of study and embracing more six more modules, thus bringing um, 120 credits. Finally, finishing with stage four, which is the, the final six modules um, and the individual completing that pathway gains a Bachelor of Science in Strength and Condition. Again, as Declan has mentioned, recognized worldwide uh, endorsed by the NSCA, uh, recognized by the NSCA, the UKCA, the Australian uh, Strength and Conditioning Association. So <clears throat> we're very pleased that this has been the traditional pathway. But in recent times, we've been very conscious um, of the, the various sectors within strength and conditioning. One of such is the youth focus coach. And with that in mind, again, through collaboration and drawing from the expertise that we have access to, the youth athletic certification um, becomes in that pathway the first certificate. And then that leads into the certificate in strength and conditioning, onto the higher cert, and then onto the Bachelor of Science in strength and conditioning. 
And as you can see, the Certificate in Youth Athletic Development uh, encompasses a war, um, more higher level, actually, modules. And that's why you see the slight shift in the, in the design there, in the allocation of, of the modules. So we might move on to give you a, um, an outline of the modules themselves. Um, we've, always, we've always felt, and, and, and been justified in a very simple principle from the get-go, and that is to train the eye of the coach. Um, coaches will at all times. Nicholas, Ben, myself, and you and yourself as coaches, you will be ensuring that you make decisions based on what you see and what you observe. But you draw from all resources. Well, yes, technology now plays such a, an emphatic and, and fascinating role, but we will always wind up using our eye, using our face-to-face -face connection with our athletes or our players or our clients we, we will always draw upon those communication elements. And functional screening is where we start. We start at training the eye for assessing one's gait, one's posture, one's movement quality, one's movement pattern. And that progresses onto basic resistance training and then onto a series of modules, which are three in number, which really focus within on resistance training. But resistance training in module one is not um, an Olympic weight or a, a loaded approach in terms of barbells and dumbbells. It's more of a, an anatomical adaptation, um, a natural body weight um, methodology of delivering greater strength, greater stability, etc. It builds from what we've seen are maybe the needs and the requirements that we can provide for our athletes or clients or players from the early module, the initial one from functional screening. Yes, Olympic weightlifting, the novel methods within strength training, as, as Nicholas will be well aware of, and Ben as well, would, would be contained within resistance training to an advanced resistance training. But in tandem with that, the progression has gone in now to the certificate in strength and conditioning, where speed and endurance development become core fundamental areas. And as you can see, and I'm still on that traditional track, um, we, all, we also have the, the more, I suppose, theoretical modules coming in where anatomy, physiology, and biomechanics uh, take place as you enter the higher certificate level. Youth athletic development as a standalone module is there because that's, that's now a condensed um, a module drawing on other modules in our revised program, and it traces the growth and development of the the infant right through up through all the stages of middle and early childhood into youth, uh, adolescent and onto the early stage adulthood. Um, sport and exercise nutrition, the critical core uh, module that underpins everything we do um, moves on then into coaching skills. And, and this module coaching skills is, is about, you know, the traits, characteristics of successful coaching, but also a, a reflection there. Uh, it, it asks us to reflect on how we interact and how we coach and what our style may be. And can we lead that style onto a, a more um, appropriate style? Let's say if we're, if we're authoritarian or, or, dem or democratic or cooperative, you know, all these styles, perhaps we need a blend of all. And depending on the occasion, and interestingly, they're talking with Ben before we started. Ben's style, I think, and it'll be interesting to hear him, may shift depending on even where he is and the culture that he is, is embedded in. So all these issues are addressed there within that coaching skills module. Coaching technology. Technology in the in recent years has become a real exponential, um, an exponentially increasing um, involvement in strength and conditioning and in our practices. And we don't expect everybody to be um, a biomechanist in order to be able to actually use technologies. No, we have looked at the very applied, practical, and, and I suppose coach-friendly ways of applying technology. Um, we're, all, we're all very familiar with global positioning systems and 
some of us may well be, uh, may well have used GPS within our team sports. Some of us may not. Um, but the awareness of all the, all the different technologies is at the core of this module, as it is then in applying technology to fitness testing, testing the status of an individual, a client. But we don't totally rely on technology here either. We use some very rudimentary, fundamental, basic tests that are still the cornerstone of our, of our practice. Finally, the final module there within that higher um, certificate level is the business of fitness and sport. And again, we have we've seen over recent years the broadening out, the, the creation of um, relevant to strength and conditioning as a focus or exercise of the focus businesses, entrepreneurs developing their, their um, businesses focused, focused on encouraging, prescribing, um, creating programs that suit for teams, but also individuals. And I think this is somewhere where Nicholas himself as a true expert, who is also a student on the program, has been working and in, in our conversation just before we commenced, Nicholas has been, I suppose, has prepared and had been prepared for the current COVID pandemic situation, which challenges us all in how we deliver our, 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 our programs. And again, the business of the coaching technology, the coaching skills, all these modules are wrapped up and now become even more important during the pandemic times where we need to gain skills, we need to gain insights and technologies in order to help us um, interact, communicate with our teams, with our clients, etc. cetera. Um, now the youth pathway there includes all the modules that we've already addressed, but starting out, the start out modules for the youth pathway uh, starts with coaching skills and moves on to speed development and youth athletic development. And, and again, I've mentioned what the coaching skills, their fundamental focus is, it's on that communication, the understanding of our styles. So that pathway, as you can see, has a little bit of a different starting point. And that's so that that individual who is interested in youth can immediately immerse themselves with good current skills into youth focus. <coughs> And finally, then coming on to the final six modules, injuries and rehabilitation. You know, it's, it's interesting and it's a, a topic that coaches and scientists are still debating that, you know, the hamstring injury, for example, in team sport isn't reducing in recent years. In fact, it's stabilizing and increasing in some areas. And with all our science and our, 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 our exact programming, this is a real interesting challenge for everybody. But yet there's there's messages there that we may not be listening to. There, there are little insights and, and, and factors that are related to that. And I choose to, to highlight that simply because our role as strength and conditioning coaches is not just about prescribing a program and, and coaching through exercises. It's about understanding the etiology and the factors that are associated with injury in sport and exercise. And our ability to understand those and be comfortable with the jargon, with the principles, with the biomechanics, with the science and the medical elements within that, does, don't make us, that doesn't make us an individual who is qualified to diagnose. It helps us to be those who can assist in a fundamental goal of all our programs, that is to seek to reduce risk of injury. And working collaboratively as well is another, is another aim out of that particular module so that we can work collaboratively with uh, the medics, with the therapists, et cetera. Training condition for special populations is uh, another very interesting module that draws our attention to those who have special needs and who have disabilities. And it also includes perhaps um, diverse groups out on the extremes, in other words, extreme participating athletes as well. So that module gives us a broad awareness of the diversity of demands and challenges our skill to be able to meet the demands 
and the needs of the individual individuals, be they in team, individual or extreme, or within disability sports. Research methods and data management is a cornerstone again. We, we place this module here at this level because this is at a higher level of study. And all the preceding modules allow us to develop the, the skills, the practical skills, coaching skills, the insights, the knowledge. And now here, we're, we're challenging ourselves and we're challenging you um, to become far better at data management, at recording, and then at creating and designing interventions and studies that will prepare you then for future study, but also for taking over that management role within, within a team or sports setting or within any exercise setting. The professional practice portfolio is a module that allows you gain credit from the work you do where you are. So in other words, if you are working already as a volunteer coach with a, a youth um, group of athletes, let's say, well, the professional practice portfolio engages you with reflective practice, asking you to consider the environment and the athletes that you're working with and to draw from that your learnings and to question yourself as a coach, to challenge yourself as a coach. Here we look to the concept of mentoring, coach mentoring as you progress through that as well. Sport and exercise psychology, another cornerstone module uh, between sport and exercise nutrition, between resistance training speed, between research methods and psychology, the psychology of exercise, the psychology of performance. Um, these, these modules, again, at the higher end, are very, very central and at the core of our practices. Finally, health and wellness, uh, terms that you will now be perhaps well used to, are now more in vogue and are now more current. And, and the practice of welfare, better welfare, the practice of looking after the, the non-physical side, not just the psychological and the motivational elements within the sport, but also the lifestyle and the factors that impact within lifestyle on how one performs. They're all collated, gathered together here and provide us again with another module um, that focuses on that. And we felt that the final modules there, as you see, broaden dramatically our, and challenge us uh, in our skill sets in delivering what we've already been well practiced in, the day-to-day, face-to-face, um, methodologies, corrective, individualizing, applying the principles. Um, so that's a little whirlwind tour of the 18 modules that go to make up the Bachelor of Science pathway, um, pathways through the traditional pathway and the youth athlete pathway.